I did. I sent him to you. Like, the way the media reported it was an unarmed black man. That was white. Yeah, they don't do it to white kids. That's the problem. Like, we don't, if... Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah. That's true. Because they get a little aggressive. But here's, like, something that's very interesting. When you report something in the media, we never talk about, like, an unarmed white man did this, but we always talk about an unarmed black man, as if we need to say that the black man was not armed, which then makes people associate all black men with being armed, because why do we need to...
welcome friends to a whole new week of science. I hope you guys had a fabulous weekend and that you enjoyed yourself. This week we are jumping into a whole new thing, but not unrelated to last week. So last week we did a lot of stuff with electricity and this week we are going to do a lot of stuff with magnets. And interestingly, we will learn later in the week that magnets and electricity are actually two faces of the same thing, which is kind of cool. So they're like siblings that are attached and joined at the hip. But we're gonna start by just making some fun things with magnets. So today I'm gonna go over what we need and then we'll get to our shout outs. If you are just joining us and you don't know what you need, that's totally fine. You'll have some time to run and go grab the stuff. And if you want to get sort of emails that tell you what you need ahead of time and what we're doing ahead of time, you can always go sign up with us at patreon.com slash Rosie Research. In the past couple weeks, we've put out a PSA for you guys to grab some magnets online and some iron filings because we are going to be making slime that shows us the magnetic field. I think that's tomorrow, actually. Yes. Um, so hopefully you guys have your magnets. Now, today you will need magnets. I am using just ceramic magnets, but if you got the neodymium magnets, the, the little tiny silver ones that are super strong, you can totally use those too, no big deal. Those are work better than these, but these are just some ones that I have. So I've got, here I've got six magnets. The more kind of the merrier, but you need one for the bottom of the pendulum that, of the toy that we're gonna make, and then you need whichever ones, how many ever you want to place after that. You will need a pair of scissors because we're going to be building and cutting and doing that kind of stuff. You're going to need some tape. I've got my hot glue gun ready to go. Um, if you want to make your fidget pendulum permanent, you won't need this. If you want to be able to play with your fidget pendulum and move things around, you could grab some like metal lids out of your recycling bin that will work. And if you don't have them right now, you can build with us and you could add that part later. You're going to need either like two paper clips or two um, safety pins, something like that. That's going to allow us to swing. You'll need either a pair of chopsticks or you can also just use um, popsicle sticks for that part if you would like to. You're going to need some craft sticks or your recycling bin, whichever one you would prefer to build out of. We're putting on our maker hats today, so there's no right or wrong way to build this, all right? I'm going to show you one way, but it is not the only way, and that's always true when we put our maker hats on. And then in here, I just have my glue sticks, because I'm going to assume that I need some extra gluing action past one stick. And that's all you need. So if you don't have your supplies ready, you can run and go grab your popsicle sticks, your building materials, AKA your recycling bin, some tape, some scissors. Hopefully you have some magnets on hand because you got that little PSA. Um, and then a couple paper clips or safety pins and we'll be ready to rock and roll after we get our shout outs. Who is with us today? Who is with us? We got a crowd. We got Yay! George and Henry up Hello, first. George and Henry. Ooh, I'm super excited. George and Henry seem like two kids that are gonna, this is gonna be like up their alley. Cause George always has like the cool fidget spinning toys. Mm. So this is gonna be a good one. I like it. Then we also got Ruby's up here. Hello Ruby and possibly Leif. It's good to see you Sydney guys. Good vibes. Yeah. We have Orion. Hello Orion, I'm glad you're back. I hope you had a good weekend. And I see Elliot's here today. Yay, Elliot, I'm so glad you're joining us again. That makes me happy. And we got Callie here. Hello, Callie. It's I good to see, see you. Callie's I also a public service announcement. Callie's in Zoom. So parents, if you don't watch kids on YouTube, they can always take our Zoom link that's over at the patreon.com slash Rosie Research, and they can go into Zoom and get the lesson live there, still with interaction, so you can ask Evan questions all the time, and he'll chime in. Yeah, and yeah. we got Tamsin. Hello, Tamsin, and probably Laurel, too. Yeah. It's great to see you, ladies. And we got Clara and Anna back today. Yay! Claire and Anna, it's great to see you guys. They're over in Zoom hanging out with us in that crowd. Awesome. I love that. Uh, we got John. What up, John? Hello, John. It's good to see you. We missed John on Friday, I think. And I'm sure John still had fun with his drawing. It's true. Lily is here. Hello, Lily. It's great to see you again, too. And Orion mentioned mm -hmm. our beetles. So maybe you yes. want to talk about our beetles real Oh, quick? yeah. So these are our beetles. They're actually right now in the this state. They're called mealworms. You might know them if you have a reptile because you often feed these guys to reptiles. 
Um, and beetles go through metamorphosis. So you have the egg and then they turn into the larva state, which is what we see here. And they're sort of eating and getting nice and fat and gaining all of their energy so that they can metamorphosize into the beetle. And they will turn into pupa, which look kind of like this. I'm curious. These are our pupa or pupae. I forget how you pronounce it when it's plural. So these mealworms, these ones are a little bit older. They've gone through part of that metamorphosis. They're sort of unlocked the next level. And now we need to wait for them, just like you wait for a caterpillar in their chrysalis to go from a caterpillar to a butterfly. These ones are going from the mealworm into a beetle. And it takes a while. So the whole process for um, beetles takes three to six months. So, but we've had these guys for about two months. And then of course they come not in the egg stage. So we should be seeing some action soon. Sometimes we have seen our pupa sort of wiggle and squirm and move. So we know they are still alive and we will definitely be keeping track of these guys over the next little bit. Um, they started with our tadpoles. Our tadpoles have grown completely into frogs and they were released as well as our butterflies. Our caterpillars have grown into butterflies and were released. These are the last ones remaining of our metamorphosis, metamorphosis project, which I'm really excited about because I've never done this metamorphosis. So I'm kind of interested to see it too. Yeah, great question, Orion. I'm glad that we had a chance to talk about that. And quick thing for our Bainbridge friends, KRL Summer Reading started today. So if you open up a book, make sure you track your hours so you can get to that 100-hour reader level, which Ooh. we love. What I know. Get? All right. Is that, who, is that everybody we got? That's what we got for right now. Awesome. But I will call out people if I see them. All right. Well, let's get started. So today we are going to play with some magnets. And magnets mysteriously and magically like to either come together or they like to repel apart. Like you can't quite push them together. And magnets are a force that we can't see. Magnets happen because of an awesome thing called quantum mechanics. They are very tricky little buggers, but they are actually what makes a magnet a magnet is also because of a current of electrons. And you might be saying, but Dr. Erica, this is not hooked up to a battery. There are no electrons here. And you would be right. There, it's not hooked up to a battery, but there are electrons that are around the um, atoms in here and they are whizzing around. And for very specific materials that happen to be magnetic, a lot has to go right. And one of the things that has to go right is the has to have the right number of electrons and they have to be sort of going in the right direction to create a pretend current, which creates a teeny tiny magnet. And that teeny tiny magnet can join other magnets. And if you have enough of them joined together, you get a magnet that looks like this, that attracts something else and it feels like magic because we can't see the force. Normally with forces we can see it, like you can see my finger pushing it, but there's forces we can't see, like gravity. We don't get to see gravity happen. Um, so this is another force like that where we can't quite see it with our eyeballs, but it is really fun to play with. And in fact, I do have, I have a question coming, but here's my quick trivia question for you guys. And you can put your comment in the, um, your answer in the comments and Evan will read them out to me as they come in. What do you think? is the biggest magnet in the world. Like, just curious, what do you think the biggest magnet in the world is? That's my trivia question for today. That'll be really fun. And we have a question. Um, two, okay. We say hi to Naomi. Hello, Naomi. Oh, I'm so glad you made it today. Also, it's just a question for me. Can you make your own magnet? You can make your own magnet. You can make it small. Um, and the way you can think about that is like these metals right now are not magnetic, but they do have teeny tiny little magnetic areas in them. The problem with this kind of metal is there is like all these sort of, imagine it like warring countries, right? Inside that metal, there's all these different pockets and the magnets point in different directions. And so they're not aligned and you basically get no magnet overall. In this one, we have all these different countries, but they've all decided to point the same way. And so then you get this magnet that happens and it can attract things, but a strong magnet can take different countries that are warring and are not pointing in the same direction and it can make it magnetic and make it point in the same direction. In fact, back in like the 12th century, so this is like forever ago in the 1200s, the way that we used to make compasses is you would take 
ferromagnetic rock, so iron ore, and you would actually rub it along a needle and you do that enough times and it will become slightly magnetic. It will not become magnetic like this where it could like pick something up or could pick up a lid. It'll just be slightly magnetic where if we put it on like a little tiny thin thread, it would then like respond. Like you could use it with um, a compass. So you're saying work. that they could make their own compass by floating a needle in water after magnetizing it. Yes, you could totally make your own compass by floating a needle in water. And to magnetize it, you just sort of rub a strong magnet always in the same direction along it. Kind of like if you were like sharpening a knife maybe, and you just do that a whole bunch of times, and you will have your very weak magnet because you will very weakly align all of those things that were all pointing in the other opposite directions, different directions, and they will all go the same way. All right. Yeah. We have a couple guesses. Ooh. Elliot thinks that the world's biggest magnet is the world itself. Interesting. And Naomi Interesting. thinks that it is the Earth's core. Hmm. Mm hmm. That's a good thing. Those are two very similar and very fantastic guesses. I like it. You guys are right. In fact, it is the core. It's the spinning of the core that gives us our magnetic field. But you can feel the magnetic field all over Earth, which is really important because that's how birds and butterflies and other animals migrate. So that really is, cool. yeah, it's really cool. Good job. Alrighty. Well, let's build our thing. So today we're going to make a little fidget and we are going to use this property that magnets either attract each other or repel each other. And we're going to use it by making a pendulum that will swing, but it'll swing in what we call a chaotic motion. So it's not reproducible. So whatever you do one time, it won't swing the same exact way ever again. And that's because it sort of starts on your initial states, even to the point of the temperature of the air, how the air is moving, but also how quickly or what angle you do it. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build our pendulum swinging piece. And to do that, we need one magnet, a chopstick, a popsicle stick, a little wooden dowel, and then you're also going to need your paper clip. All right, and what we're gonna do is we are going to glue the magnet to one end and the paper clip to the other end. And we want the paper clip not to be glued sort of down here. We wanna be able to attach it like this. So we have the loop that we can get to still. And that's so that we can hang this and it can swing really nicely because we're going to add another paper clip on the top piece and they can intertwine to make it nice and swingy. So all you got to do is glue the magnet on the bottom and then the paper clip on the top. And you could even tape it if you wanted to tape. You could use a mixture of tape and glue. That's sort of up to you. But again, you do want to make sure that you have that loop of the paper clip on the top. And if you're using a safety pin, same thing. You want to have a loop on top that you can access so that we can hang it. And I'm also just going to put a piece of tape on this just so that I don't have to worry about it moving around as I go to the next part for you guys. So there is the top of my pendulum piece. And that's because this is going to hang at the top and be the top part. And then I'm going to just put a big glob of glue and I'm going to glue it like this. I'm going to have to hold it for a minute to stay straight. It does not matter which side of the magnet you put it on. All right. So that part is not important. I'm going to put a nice big glob of glue and I'm going to hold this straight up and down until that big glob of glue dries. All right. If you have tape, you can tape over the magnet. That's totally fine. It is not something like electricity where if you don't if you don't have two magnetic pieces touching they won't work anymore so magnets will work through things that are not magnetic and i can show you that as i am waiting on this guy right here because i could eh, put a couple magnets on the inside of my tape roll and on the outside and you'll notice that it'll go through the tape roll even though the tape is not magnetic so if you wanted to you could put some pieces of tape around this or if you're making a project, because we have our maker hats on and it does not, there's no right or wrong way to make something, you could create like a character that goes around this magnet to hide the magnet if you wanted to. Ooh, that'd That's be cool to, like, totally fine. Draw it on the tape. Yeah, so you can do that too, because again, the magnetic field will go through things that are not magnetic. So it's not like electrons where they need a highway and metal to move. It's much more like gravity. Gravity works on top of the table, even though there's 
you know, dirt and my building and the table between this magnet and the earth, it still falls. So magnetism is the same way as that. All right, so once you have your chopstick, again, it could be a just a stick, it could be a popsicle stick, um, it could be a pencil, it could be a pen, whatever you want. And we've got the magnet glued to one side and we've got our paper clip glued to the other so that the paper clip kind of comes up a little. All right, so that we're gonna set aside. And the next thing we need to do is we need to build our base. So we're gonna build the structure for our pendulum to go off of. If you have recycled materials, you can do that. The one big thing that we need is we need our pendulum to hang about an inch up. So the way it's gonna hang is I'm gonna lock in this other piece and you see how now it can really kind of move around very easily. I don't wanna build it so high that it, the pendulum's up here and the other magnets are down here because I can't really influence this magnet. They're too weak for that. I wanna be about an inch off the surface so that I can sort of see how it very quickly started moving and I get to a certain spot. I wanna be within that range. So ultimately I want the pendulum to be hanging maybe about an inch or so off of the surface. And you can see how it's wiggling up here. The two magnets are not interacting. So this would be too high of a base I would build. I wanna get right into this range where I can, you can see how it's interacting with that magnet. They're strong enough to either attract or repel each other at that point. And these two are actually attracting. And we can notice that if I flip it, it will make it so that, that it's already starting a fun little pendulum state right here with just one magnet. So when I build my base, I wanna make sure that the two sets of magnets that I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put one on the floor of the piece and I'm gonna put one here that we already have here. So I need to build something that's gonna hold this up because it's not gonna be too much fun to just hold my arm here. All right, so we're gonna build something to hold that up. And you could use, if like a chopstick, like I use this chopstick, I could use this chopstick, the other one, to get a whole bunch of height in that, which would be really handy. I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna build a piece that's gonna come over and hang like this. That way I'll have a piece to hang that other orange paper clip to. So I'm gonna put this guy on just like that. And that just gives me a lot of height really quickly, which is pretty handy. And then I need to connect this to some sort of bottom flooring piece, which I can also make. I'll put that down. I like to make flooring if you're using popsicle sticks. I really like to just line up a whole bunch of popsicle sticks. I think 11 is the same length as a regular popsicle stick. And then I can glue down little feet and flip it over to look really nice. If you're building with your recycling bin, you can use whatever materials work well for you. Um, boxes are great, fast building pieces for this. It would be much faster if you're using boxes than I am with popsicle sticks, but that's okay. There's no speed challenge to being a maker. There's just the challenge of solving all the problems as we come to them. So I'm just gluing these guys and then when I flip it over, I have sort of, I glued these pieces, which makes it really easy. It's easier to glue perpendicular to this flooring than it is to try to glue each single one of these together. That can be really tough and you can burn yourself a lot. But if I put it this way on the table, it's like this beautiful, nice flooring, which is great. And so I sort of need to raise this up a little bit more. And if I wanted my flooring bigger, I could make it bigger right now. I could add more square tiles to it and that would be fine. Um, and if I'm happy with this, then we can keep building. I think I'm gonna build a few up to help give me some structure. And at the same time, I think Evan has a question for us. Can you describe to us what a pendulum is? Because we had a question about that. Yes, so a pendulum is something that swings. A swing is also a pendulum. So it's something that sort of moves back and forth. And it uses usually something we call simple harmonic motion. So when you're swinging, you're going up and back and up and back. And you just keep doing the same thing. You go up and back and that's a pendulum swinging, right? There's clocks that can keep time by this because it's always sort of that same da 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 da. And you can also have pendulums that move in a circle that go like this. Anything that sort of is doing the same thing over and over again. 
So like um, a tire swing at the playground? Yep. Or tire a, swings a swing are pendulums. Ooh, great question. So what are pendulums? I mean, your ponytail swinging is a pendulum. It's attached at one point and then free at the other, and it just sort of responds to gravity. When it comes off center, gravity pulls it down, but it just goes a little too fast and comes back and goes off center again. Gravity pulls it back down. So yeah, swings, ponytails, necklaces can be pendulums. Um, what are other simple pendulums that I'm thinking of? Like if you were to hang your backpack off of a hook and it started swinging side to side, that would be a pendulum. Pendulums are everywhere. I it's see. Pretty great. I see that Clara has a question in Zoom, but she needs to type it. Okay. So Clara, you got to type your question into Zoom because we do have Zoom on mute right now as we build these things. Looks like Micah just got here. Hey, Micah. Hello, Micah. Micah how are you? I'm going to build a back wall for this so that I can put it sort of perpendicular and then get glue this piece onto it. So I'll show you guys that in just one second after I make this back wall. Looks like Georgia is joining us also. Um, do you just make it to make your own project? Yeah, it's sort of a building project today. We're doing some magnets with our building. Like, so, like, you can... I'm going to no. glue this, my friends, and then I'm going to tape over the glue to really hold it in place. Can I use All the right. Um, yep. And George is going to start building with her stuff. So I'm just now building these pieces. You know what, there's another glue gun, Georgia. Why don't you grab it out of here and plug it in, please. So I'm gonna hold this straight up and my current plan is then I can also measure how high I want this to go, which is really quite handy. Cause then I can put it here and I can see like how high do I need this to be so that it's in the right spot. All right, and I clearly want it a little bit higher. So maybe I even put it up here and we can check that. Like that might be great. I think I'm going to do it right there. And I'm noticing that this might be a little bit weak. And the builder in me says, I could probably brace that by just adding some triangular pieces right here that will help me brace my pendulum. So I could do that. You might say, ooh, but Dr. Erica, if I put it like that, maybe my pendulum hits it and I don't want that. That's totally cool. Whoops. You could brace it more steeply. So you could do it like that. You don't even have to brace it if you don't want to. You could just add more glue. These are all things that you get to think about when you are the maker at hand. Mama, You're going to have to wait for just a little bit for it to warm up, Georgia. Oh, no, your phone's charging. You though. can unplug that. All right. So I'm going to wait for this. I'm going to add some more in here just to show you guys. You don't always have to add that stabilizing structure. I'm going to really get some good glue in here. Just like that. And this will be really strong. And then I'm gonna have to put this guy in here. And I'm thinking I might do glue and tape over that. I'm gonna re-measure and double check that I want it at the right height. In fact, I think I'm gonna attach these two together. It looks like I could even just almost attach it. I'm gonna make this piece come up like that and then I can glue it and tape it. Glue and tape are kind of my favorite. And then I can figure out, ooh, that's a little too tall, I'm noticing. So what I could do instead is I could bend this piece through here. I'll make it a little bit shorter. Mm, no, I'm going to go this way again. Even though it's a little too tall, I think I'm going to actually just bend it. I can just bend my paper clip, just like that. Ooh, that'll work great. And I can glue it really well. So I just bent my paper clip at a 90 degree angle. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You could just glue or tape it on. I'm doing that because I found it was a little bit too tall for me and I didn't like that. So that was the way I found to solve that problem. You could find a different way to solve the problem just fine. Georgia has a question. Um, can we make whatever we want? You know, Georgia, you can always make whatever you want. I'm making something different with the people on the show today. All right. All right, so I have this guy here, and I'm going to put some tape there, too, just to make sure it's nice and secure. All right, I'm going to let that glue dry before I take my fingers off, because I have a feeling if I take them off, it will very quickly just fall off. So we'll let it dry a little bit. 
and then we'll put some tape on and then I can start to talk about or think about how I'm going to attach it here to make this little pendulum. I'm going to add some more tape. Sometimes hot glue and tape together are the best way to make a really strong structure. Sometimes they're not. Mm, sometimes not. It's true. It just depends on what you got to make that day. I'm going to move this down just a little bit. Like that. And I'm really excited because I know I have so many builders that come to this class. But I can't wait to see what everybody else makes. All right, so this is going to be my sort of piece that swings. You can already see how well it swings. And then I can come down here, I can measure sort of the height that I want it. I'm thinking I want it about that height. So I'm gonna glue it. It's not as tall, this wall, I would like it a little bit taller. So I'm actually gonna add another piece on here because I'm not happy with the way I originally made that. Great thing about being a maker, you can always edit, break it apart, change it, to make it do what you really want it to do. All right, once it's made, you don't have to just stick with that. You can always make changes. So I'm making a little change to add a little bit more. I'm just feeling like it needs a little more strength and structure right there. All right, so here is this part, just like that. That's beautiful. I'm actually also noticing, I kind of want this piece to be in the middle and I can do that by taking that part off later. I think I'm gonna, hook it all in right now and then I'll take it off and recenter that how I want it. So I'm going to add some glue here. Just like this. And I'm also going to secure this one with tape too. So I'm going to just glue it on at that spot. I'm about an inch about where I would like it to be. I'm going to hold on to that for a moment for the glue to dry. And I'm going to fix I if you like it totally fine. I don't like how this magnet, when it hangs and it's dropping, is sort of not centered on my little box. So I'm gonna fix that. And I'll show you how to fix that if you want to. If you don't mind it like that, totally fine. Leave it like that, that's no big deal. And I'm gonna, so I glued it on here on the back piece. I'm actually gonna add some tape to that glue to make it a little bit stronger. Just like that. And that just helps me Make sure it stays on, I don't want it to fall off. I could, even if I wanted to, take a skinny piece of tape. And these are all things that you only learn by making. So the more that you put on your maker hat, the more ways that you learn to sort of fix things and make things. Like I'm gonna put these guys around like this to add extra stability to that. And you don't have to, you can see how it works. But if you find that's a problem, that is an idea of taking skinny pieces of tape and sort of crossing them over like an X. All right, so that's actually really strong right now. And like I said, I did not like how this was a little off center. So what I can do, just like every maker, if you don't like something, you can redo it. I'm gonna take this piece up. I'm gonna take the glue off my chopstick as best I can, just so it sticks really nicely next time. And I'm gonna take the glue off the popsicle stick. And now I can decide where is my center. And maybe I want it to be there instead. Maybe I'm happy there. Fantastic. So I'm going to add a new piece of glue here. And I can re-center this a little bit further back so it's not quite so far over. All right. And then i got to wait for that to dry. And I could also add tape over the top if you were finding that it kept wanting to fall off. You could add some tape over the top too. So you'll notice that I love using tape and hot glue together. So I can do this just like that where I tape it and I can tape the tape to itself and make it nice and strong. All right, just tape won't work for that piece, but maybe tape and glue would work great together. All right, so I have this great swinging pendulum. And so now the next part is we want to add some things in. Now I can add them on the bottom, but if I don't glue them down, you'll notice what happens. They kind of just stick together. I could add them whoop, like that and it will make them move around. So if I want it to be permanent, I need to glue these down. All right. So one way would just be literally take some hot glue and put them down in whichever way. Personally, I like to double check that they are repelling so that your mag, your pendulum keeps moving. So making sure that it's on a spot where it always repels because when we put two guys that are repelling each other, it will try to, oops, that one's not repelling. Let's see, there we go. It will always sort of 
be moving and trying to figure out how do I get away from the two of them. So you could hot glue these down. If you want it to be more of a game where you can move things around, what you could do is you can take a metal lid. Oops, and you know what? I did not quite think about this when I measured how high it was gonna be. But I can always raise this up some more, that's no big deal. So if I wanna do a metal lid, I'm gonna have to raise mine up a little bit more, which is just fine. I'm gonna break it and raise it. That's what we do. And to raise it, I'm at kind of at my max height right now, so I'm gonna actually add more height like this. All right, and you'll notice that I'm sort of just troubleshooting as I go. And that's what happens when you're a maker, you're not actually sure exactly what you're doing. It's more fun to not have an exact plan because then there's no right or wrong, right? I can take this piece off. I can add some new pieces to this to make it taller. All right, so I'll add a few more popsicle sticks here. Just like this. And that will let me raise it up to take into account the height of my can lid. So I'll just add a couple more there. And then to make sure that I put it at the right height, I could put my can lid down. So I could glue this lid down. If I'm using two lids, that's totally fine. You could glue both lids down. You want your lids at the same height. So I'm gonna take some glue and I'll put it on this can lid. And again, if you didn't have can lids in your recycling bin, no big deal. You could glue those guys down also. You would be all done if you had already glued them down. All right, so I'm gonna take my can lids. I've got two can lids, so I'm just gonna hot glue this. This one's flat, so I'm just gonna hot glue it to the other one like this. There we go. And then when I measure this, I wanna measure it above those can lids. So we're gonna re-glue this on, and it's probably happy right about there. Um, do you know that pendulum that has the six silver balls bouncing in the yes, bottom? Yes, I do. How, how, those are not magnets. How would those you describe those? So those, those actually work by something called momentum, and momentum is this idea that if you're moving, you're gonna keep moving. Like when you go roller skating and you're rolling down a hill, you keep moving down that hill until you do something different, like apply your roller skate brakes. All right, so something in motion, it's called something in motion stays, oops, in motion. And the way that the pendulum works is it actually transfers all of its momentum to the second ball, which very quickly transfers it to the third ball, to the fourth ball, to the fifth ball, and then the sixth ball gets kicked and it gets kicked out, and then it comes back and it kicks through all of those balls. You just don't see the middle balls getting kicked through, but it happens. Ooh, I'm wondering if maybe I'm not going high enough. Let's go a little bit higher. Sometimes we can be a little indecisive as makers. I think that's totally fine, personally. That's how you reach perfection. I have a question. Mm -hmm. You could just make pockets with tape, and then mm -hmm. whenever you want it higher and higher, or lower and lower, and mm -hmm. you would just do that. That's a great idea. George is thinking, I could make it so that this guy actually goes up and down. I think that's really clever. Like with a straw, maybe. It could be like a pocket that it goes into. That would be called telescoping. That's a cool idea. I love that idea. You could even maybe, instead of putting metal can lids, you could tape down your magnets if you don't have them, and that would allow you to also move your magnets around whenever you wanted to instead of gluing them down. See, there's always so many options if we were to think differently. That's why I love hearing everybody's different thoughts because there is no right way. If we say you have to make it this way, we lose all the creativity, and Georgia might not have had that thought. She might have just gotten upset that, oh, her thing didn't work and it was wrong. Instead, she's got her creative thinking cap on, and she's saying, here's a way to solve that problem. And I think that's brilliant. I kind of wish I would have thought of that and did that. Kelly would like to mention that there are now such a thing as roller skate brakes. And she knows yep. that because she does roller derby. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it would be really scary if you didn't have brakes on your roller skates, right? Because you couldn't stop yourself because you were in motion. You have to hit something like a wall, right? Something else has to act on you. And that's the same thing with those balls. All right, so now I can just like literally put these guys on here like this, however I want to. Whoop. Maybe I'm slightly too high. Let's do it this way. Let's go over here. Oh, I'm slightly too high. I need George's, George's idea. 
That would have been so much easier if I had done George's idea. But you can see that if I, oh yeah, no, here we go. We gotta go higher, we gotta go higher. And I know that because we keep hitting our magnets. If I had George's idea, I would just zoop this up. Can you turn over the magnets? I could probably put these magnets underneath actually. Ooh, sneaky. But, Mama, the one thing is about the straw. You wouldn't even see them. It's, it's the straw. And now Mama, you'll this, see, and you can see what, how this changes. If the straw, Mama, I can put this guy here. If the straw happened, then if I it would them. just slide back down. Maybe. It wouldn't. Like, so if you have like metal stuff, you can actually see what will happen. Like these guys are attracting, so I could try to flip it over. So if I flip it over, still attaches to that metal, and now it's going that way. And you can kind of see how this is like a fun little toy. It doesn't know what to do. Maybe I put that there. Ooh, but see, now it's sort of getting attracted to that. If I flip that over, it can't go there anymore. Ooh, but it's attracted to this one down here, and I can flip that one over. Or I could take it out. Ooh, now it's really attracted to this one. Interesting. Look at all these things that we can do, and you can make it go all different ways. And if you've used this, if you decided to glue them down, you're sort of stuck. But you could tape them down onto that metal, onto your base, or you could add these metal can lids. And every time you do it, you get some cool new sort of thing. It will act differently each time, which is fun. So you could either throw it in differently, or you could change where these magnets are. So it's sort of like a great fun toy that will never stop giving you joy. This yes. Is, this is not a question from anyone else, but I would like to see you decorate a piece of tape so it looks like a little person cutting. Oh, okay. Hands. Let's do it. I have it on the magnet. Yeah, put it on the magnet. Let's do it on the magnet. We're gonna do it. Let's see. Let's get a little pen here. We'll make a little person. Can someone um daddy can And my person's gonna be wearing a party hat. Because it was Evan's birthday over the weekend, so we're still in, like, party mode. My person is happy about the party. It's going to go to the dance. Here we go. My person's going to the dance. I'll just glue it on right there. And now we can go party. Go to the dance, little person. Go to the dance. Yeah, it's like a mosh pit. Parting all over. Woohoo! Which is cool. You can see, like, what happens if I take that part away. Ooh, and these ones on the side. You can see what happens if I go in from this side. Which it's is, like ooh, that was swing. neat. It's like a swing, yeah. You could put a person on a swing, and then you just have to keep restarting it. I got the scissors to Georgia got the everything scissors. Up. And this is really fun because, you know, once you've gotten this, you can start to change where they are. Like, look at that. My party person wanted to go get the punch. The party person was, like, hungry. It's like, popcorn's over here. And then it was like, oh, no, that's just vegetables. That's the veggie platter. <laughs> I want to go to the candy spot. And then they can go on the dance floor and dance, which is pretty awesome. And that is our project. It's a pretty awesome little building project. Again, no right way or wrong way to make these building projects. And it's pretty simple. We have our pendulum arm. This is called the arm of our pendulum. And remember, one side we have a magnet, and the other side we have a paper clip. And then I just built something that could hold that pendulum arm up. And I used a paper clip to make sure that it can swing freely. And then we just put our magnets on the bottom, wherever you want to put them. You either need to glue them, tape them, or put them onto a metallic piece that is glued down so that they don't move around. But then you can move them around as much as you'd like. And you can see how does moving them change what my awesome little pendulum does. And if you're wondering why doesn't it go on forever, that would be because there's friction up here and there are a set of forces here that if it finds a spot where it's stable, it will want to stay. So there's all sorts of reasons why it doesn't go on forever. But that is our project. And I'm curious if we have any questions or if we should head on over to our Zoom lunch room. I can show you guys real quick too how we would just tape it down. If you were just taping it down, you could just add a piece of tape like this. And then tape it down onto here. And that can work for you too. That would be another way. Ooh, they were attracting. Let's flip that one over so they repel each other. Just like that. And that allows you, if you use tape instead of hot glue, it does allow you to move it and play with it in a different way. I just want to go with that one because I know. It's not, it, now it's like swinging. This is cool. 
I feel like I need to like add some like a disco dance floor, like a checkerboard. With some like a LED, like a rainbow LED coming up from the bottom. It'd be a good party. It'd be awesome. And that is how you make a fun little fidget pendulum out of magnets. Tomorrow, I believe, we're going to actually see the fields that are making this happen. So remember we talked about how it was invisible, how we couldn't see the things between it. Just like the force of gravity is invisible, I don't see something hanging on to my chair and keeping it on Earth, so it's an invisible force. But tomorrow we are going to make some very special slime that will allow us to see what the forces are and where they are on these magnets, which will be a lot of fun. And without further ado, I will say goodbye to our YouTube channel and hello to our Zoom friends. We'll be eating lunch together. If you want to join us and you don't have our Zoom link, again, it's at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. And you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure you send us all of your pictures of your student projects and that can go into our pre-show. Evan's very helpful with that. And other than that, we will see you tomorrow for Magnetic Slime. Have a great afternoon, friends. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, because I'm saying goodbye to my YouTube friends. Oh.